This is WWE Colts fan here with another DVD and Blu-ray update to show all the DVDs and Blu-rays that I have gotten since the last video. I've gotten quite a lot of DVDs this time. I do have a few Blu-rays, just not as many. Well, I'll just give you a brief summary. This is all just the DVDs right there. Yeah. So let's get into this. Now, at least I can say for this for the DVDs, it's all mostly sets, not just like individual items. There's a couple, but most of them are big sets, mostly TV ones. In fact, this first one from CBS, we have Beauty and the Beast, starring Linda Hamilton and Ron Perlman of uh, Hellboy fame. Um, this ran, on, I think, on CBS from, well, of course it would be CBS because it's on CBS DVD, from 1987 to 1990 um, for three seasons, well, technically two and a half, because in the middle of the third season, Linda Hamilton left. And, of course, you can't have the show without your beauty, you know, your Belle-like character, because it's not Belle and the prints from the Disney version, but it's inspired by that same story. And a few of these episodes were actually written by George R. R. Martin, who later went on to create Game of Thrones. This next one, also from CBS, in fact most of the TV shows, all but one, are from CBS here. This one's a little bigger set than the last one, because this is a four-season set. We have the first four seasons of CSI Crime Scene Investigations. And I figured, I saw this at Walmart, I had to pick it up for 40 bucks, while Beauty and Beast was 30 bucks. Now these next two I'm going to show together. Since I got CSI, well, I found also the first two seasons of CSI Miami. This one's quite a bit different uh, than the other one, because David Caruso, who plays Horatio Cain, if he's in the scene, he always gets the last line in. Ch um, good example, watch uh, Jim Carrey on The Late Show impersonating him. It's hilarious. Okay, next from World Wrestling Entertainment, we have Clash of Champions, which was the SmackDown Live exclusive pay-per-view. Yeah, of course, I'm a WWE Colts fan, you know. i got to have WWE stuff. Now, this next one, overall, was the most expensive uh, thing I did buy in, out of this entire video. And this was on DVD, and it cost me around $70. And this was at Walmart. We have BBC production of Sherlock starring Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman in the four seasons that this ran, which are three episodes each. Yeah, yeah this was, um, as I said, a BBC uh, series. And I like these two actors, especially Benedict Cumberbatch. And this is a modern-day take on Sherlock Holmes. Not like the show Elementary, but similar in concept that's modern day. Well, at least this one sets it in London, not New York City. Then the last DVD I have, my brother showed this movie to me and I got it online at Walmart for 10 bucks. From Walt Disney Pictures, we have Ray Bradbury's Something Wicked This Way Comes. It's about these two boys that live in a small town and one night this carnival shows up but then a lot of weird things uh, happen. And it stars uh, the only known actor I can think of well there's a couple uh, we have Jonathan Price who plays the Mr. Dark as well as uh, Pam Greer as one of his associates. It's real, it was one of those movies when Disney tried to go live action, what, what year was this? I'm trying to think what year it was. 
and it was like the mid late mid to early eighties when they tried to do this. And they well and also they did another movie. I don't have it, but uh, a movie called Watcher in the Woods. That might be a movie I might eventually try to get as well. Okay, now that I switched piles here, now onto the Blu-rays. First one released by Warner Bros. We have Blade Runner 2049 with Ryan Gosling and Harrison Ford. This next one from Universal. I'm just going to go through these. We have a movie I remember as a kid enjoying. I think I've seen it in theaters when it originally played. We have Beethoven. Back, my brother and I love this movie so much. We even named one of our dogs Beethoven. Uh, this next one from WWE, we have what was a re-release, but they put it on Blu-ray. Brock Lesnar, Here Comes the Pain, which they did add some new material on here. Which mainly, I think it was a match that he had with John Cena. Uh, just a few years ago when he returned. Okay, this next one is the only TV show one that I have uh, in Blu-ray. We have Game of Thrones uh, Season 7, which Season 8 will not come out until 2019. And this is the Walmart exclusive uh, which features this Blu-ray disc. I think you can also get this disc at uh, Target, but however, I think there's additional content that is exclusive, which this one is about the visual effects, which is the main reason why Game of Thrones Season 8 will not be till 2019. Okay, this next one, released by Universal and STX Entertainment, we have... The first-person shooter video game inspired movie, Hardcore Henry. I've been wanting to check that movie out for quite some time. Uh, this next one, directed by Robert Wise, starring George C. Scott. We have The Hindenburg, which this was made when studios were trying to cash in on um, Irwin Allen's disaster flick ideas like the Poseidon Adventure and other movies like that. In fact, I have several movies like that, like Earthquake is another good example. This next one, released by Shout Factory, uh, we have the complete miniseries. Well, so I guess this is the second TV Blu-ray thing I've got. Franco Zeffirelli's Jesus of Nazareth. Now, there's two different versions of this. There's the original DVD release by Artisan Home Entertainment, which now would be Lionsgate, if I'm correct, which, even though it's split across two discs, but it's presented like a feature film, which this was a movie over in Europe. But this, however, is the original U.S. television broadcast, which was done as a miniseries on NBC. And it too is spread across two discs. And I guess I should just go over who's all in this because it's actually got a big, big cast. We have Anne Bancroft, Ernest Borgnine, uh, James Earl Jones, Stacey Keach, Ian McShane, Sir Lawrence Olivier, Donald Pleasance, Christopher Plummer, Michael York. Yeah, so... Uh, for the especially for the time, that was a big cast to do a mini series with. Next from Universal, uh, been wanting to get this movie in my collection just just to have it because it's one of my favorite Robin Williams movies. We have Patch Adams, and what's sad is there's a, another co-star who um, who passed away a, a few years ago before. Robin Williams, and that was Philip Seymour Hoffman, as you see him right there. And what's funny is, I guess, uh, the real Patch Adams does not like this movie. 
because my guess is it probably suffers the same problem as Good Morning Vietnam. It's a lot of Robin Williams being Robin Williams. But still, a very fun movie to watch. This next one, uh, originally a MGM title, but this is the Shout Factory, Scream Factory edition. We have Poltergeist 3, which now I own all three movies of uh, the original trilogy. I don't have the remake. I don't plan to get the remake either. This one's kind of like the, I want to say the odd one out maybe, because it was made very cheap compared to the other two. They could not do any visual effects in post-production. All effects had to be done in camera or uh, in editing. In other words, like a brief animation, like a lightning flash. That's it. And Craig T. Nelson and I forget the actress who plays his wife in that movie, they don't even return. The only cast member that returns are Heather O'Rourke and Zelda Rubenstein. They're the only ones that return. And basically they had to do all the effects using those one-way mirrors that you'll see in like police interrogation rooms. Uh, they did do some makeup effects in this movie. Uh, they brought in uh, Dick Smith uh, as one of the people to do the effects. He mainly worked on Heather O'Rourke's character. But then they brought in this John Caglione Jr. to do the rest. And it's it's not as good as the other two. Um, well, even here's the big makeup effect right here because the actor who played Reverend Kane in Part Two uh, passed away right after the release of Part Two, so they had to get another actor and they put makeup on him just to make him look like the actor that he was replacing. And then finally, from Universal, it's been called Mad Max on Water. Kevin Costner in Waterworld. Well, anyway, that does it for me. Until next time.